She-Hulk Episode 2 Breakdown and Ending Explained With Episode 2 of the show being released, it built upon the introduction that we got to the world that was set up for us in Episode 1. Episode 1 saw us focus on Jen and the discovery of her powers, and this one was more specifically focusing on how she handled them in the real world and amongst the public. With Superhuman Law being the title, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from it. So let's get into it. Here is She-Hulk Episode 2, Breakdown and Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The episode picked up directly after the events that unfolded in Episode 1 of the show. She was being seen as a new hero that had entered the world, and whilst being praised by the public, we saw that her boss decided to fire her. By Jen turning into the She-Hulk, she compromised the jury's unbiased nature due to saving them from getting a desk thrown at their head by Titania. This led Holden Holloway to denounce it and end it as a mistrial, leading Jen's firm to lose the case. This meant that she was now jobless in a world where no law firm would take her due to the chance that she could turn into the Hulk at any moment and cost the firm a case, which would be big money. During this opening section, we heard a little more about Titania in this world. We still don't know that much about her, but we know that she's an individual with superhuman abilities that's known as a superpowered influencer. We've not really seen anyone take on that role in the MCU before, but it's one that's now being filled by Titania. She was contained at the end of Episode 1, but I doubt this will be the last we see of her. As Jen was now struggling to find a job, we saw Holden Holloway, the person she was previously up against in Episode 1 of the show, and a partner in the law firm GLK and H, approach Jen with the intention of recruiting her to work for him and to not only work for him, but to head up a division. This was due to the fact that he believed that he beat her in the original case in episode one of the show, and got it ruled out due to that reason, rather than the jury now being biased. Whilst Jen was looking for a job, we saw that there were two Easter eggs that appeared on screen during the episode. We had one news article with the headline, Man Fights with Metal Claws in Bar Brawl. This was a nod to Wolverine, and we also had Captain America as Jen's phone background when she picked up her phone shortly afterwards, as well as another reference to Cap by Blonsky later on. Prior to Jen taking the job, we also had a scene where she went round to her family's house for dinner. I thought this was a nice scene to place within the episode. It was one that stripped the mood back, provided an element of comic relief, but also showed more of a human side to Jen and the struggle that she was facing in finding a job. The father and daughter relationship outside of the humor and the understanding that she was struggling but her father was there for her was nice to see. It was a needed inclusion. After this, we then saw her take on the role as the head of the superhuman law division at Holloway's firm. She was put in this role because she's considered great at her job, but also because she's now the most famous attorney that actually has superhuman abilities. And with more people now emerging with powers that need representation, it would be considered more consumer-facing to have somebody that's actually one of them, so the representation can be more understandable. Whilst Jen was walking through the office, we also had another easter egg appear in the scene, and it was of the comic book collection that was on the shelf of one of the workers there. There was a selection of comic books that were on Captain America, The Avengers, and several others. Jen needed to take on the form of She-Hulk the entire time that she was working there, visiting clients and in the public eye. This was something she wasn't told up front before taking the job, but she was willing to do so. Something else that she wasn't told about was that the first case that she would be taking on would be that of Emil Blonsky. Emil Blonsky was in the original Hulk movie that came out in 2008 and is also Abomination. In the movie that's widely considered the first entry to the MCU, we saw him battle it out with the Incredible Hulk, and that's why Jen mentioned how he tried to kill Bruce and why she didn't want to originally take on the case. However, she was put in a situation where if she didn't, then she'd no longer have a job. This job came with perks, good money, a nice office, was in the public eye, and was significantly better than her last one. So she definitely didn't want to lose all of that and go back to not having a job. We saw Pug get introduced to us at this moment as well, whose actual name is Augustus Puglis. In the comic books, he's an individual who becomes really good friends with Jen and develops feelings for her. But Jen is unaware of them and they're not necessarily reciprocated, so I feel we may have seen our first introduction of a love interest. Pug doesn't have any superhuman abilities despite being in the superhuman division. We saw Jen meet with Emil in the second half of the episode, where her job essentially depended on it. Emil Blonsky stated how he was a changed man and that he wanted to get parole. 
We heard that it was the government who gave him all the serum that essentially turned him into a superhuman soldier. And at that point, we saw Jen's ears prick up slightly. So I feel she may use that to her advantage. After all, we did see that she said that she had a strategy for the case. We got a little bit of a backstory about Emil and how he was a highly decorated soldier. But when he was tasked to take on the Hulk, he was perceived as a villain. And now the Hulk is considered to be a hero. Despite Emil saying that he's a changed man and that he no longer turns into abomination and he has it under control, I think it's all a front. Especially considering that in the closing moments of the episode, we saw a news clip that said how Blonsky had escaped from prison and was participating in an underground fight club in the form of abomination. In the news clip, it looked as though he was fighting somebody from the master of the mystic arts. So I imagine this will be delved into later on down the line, especially considering that Benedict Wong appears in the show. Another revelation that we had was when Jen was on the phone to Bruce. We saw that he was on the very spaceship that came down and caused the car crash at the start of episode 1. He was in outer space on the Sakaran craft and was going off to a location that is unknown. He could well be going off to Sakaar and maybe even meeting the Grand Master, but that's something we'll just have to wait and see. I thought episode 2 was quite good. It built upon the first episode well, introduced us to Emil Blonsky and showed that it's going to be an interesting and difficult ride with Jin not only battling with the public's opinion of She-Hulk, but also being the attorney of a villain in the show who the people will most certainly not want to be let out into the public again. I think we'll see more of Titania as the show goes on and maybe even how she's considered an influencer as I'd be intrigued to know if that helps her in any way. Holloway is a man that's extremely interesting in the sense that he seems a bit suspicious and deliberately puts people on things that they may not like, such as with Jen with the case of Blonsky and moving somebody to where it's cold because he knows they don't like cold weather. I feel he's going to have a wider role to play in the show and I'm interested to see which side of the fence he's going to be on. I'm also looking forward to seeing how what Bruce is doing is going to tie into the wider plot and narrative of the show. I can't wait for episode 3. So, there you have it. She-Hulk episode 2, Breakdown and Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos on She-Hulk such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of the second episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.